Four years ago, before the election of 2016, I took a little vacation uh, driving across parts of Florida. And I came home and I posted something on Facebook predicting that Donald Trump was going to be reelected. And I made that prediction based on what I saw. Once I got out of Hillsborough County, where I live, which is heavily Democratic, and drove across the rest of the state, all I saw predominantly were uh, tr Trump signs, not Hillary Clinton signs. And I would say the Trump to Clinton signs were running about seven or eight to one. Uh, this past weekend, I went out across the state, and I would say this time, the Trump versus Biden signs are running at least 20 to one. It was much more prevalent to see Trump signs this time than it was four years ago. So I'm going to make another prediction which I've been making for a while now, that Donald Trump's going to certainly carry Florida, sure of that, and he's probably going to be re-elected president of the United States by a bigger margin than he was the last time. And I feel pretty confident about that based on what I saw. I know it's not scientific, it's purely anecdotal, and in that sense, you could say, well, it doesn't mean much, but those are my observations, and that's just a gut feeling I got once I got outside of my little democratic enclave. Donald Trump's going to get a lot more votes than he did four years ago. But there were a couple of other things that happened while I was gone, and uh, I thought I'd comment on them because there were some, some nifty stories that I think uh, tell us a lot about what's going on. One of the stories I got a kick out of was the one about Nancy Pelosi getting her hair done. Uh, in a salon that was supposed to be closed. Uh, even CNN reported it, as you can see here, that Nancy Pelosi just handed Trump a campaign gift, which she certainly did. I mean, she looks like a total hypocrite. Uh, and they do this all the time. Rules for thee, but not for me. And there are all kinds of excuses as to why she wasn't wearing a mask and why she was in the salon in the first place uh, getting her hair done. But it's still, as you know, everybody would say, it's the optics that matter. People aren't going to read the details. People are just going to see the video of her strolling through the salon with her wet hair, no mask, getting her hair done at a time when salons are supposed to be closed. Remember the uh, Chicago mayor who went and had her hair done at a time when hair salons were supposed to be closed because she needed to get it done because she's in the public eye? They keep hitting us with this, this bull, but then they do the exact opposite themselves. Rules for thee, not for me. And this was one I really uh, enjoyed. I read this this morning. This is from the Oregonian. And it says that Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler says he'll move after protest outside his condo building draws arrests. Widespread calls for change. Now, for, for, I mean, there's so many levels here. I mean, this guy is the wimpiest mayor I've ever seen in American history. Uh, he was out there marching with them and they were, you know, calling him names and calling for his resignation and that didn't seem to get through to him. And then he's just handled everything poorly. And then finally they end up at his condo where he has a, uh, his condo is worth, you know, between eight and $900,000. And I assume other people living in there are, are like him or as rich or just or richer. And they're uh, now, according to the story, this is interesting. This is this is a it was a repeated demonstrations, demonstrations, quote, including on Monday when crowds demanded he resigned and some people set fires and broke windows, unquote. Now, I don't know about you. If I went and I went to somebody's house and demonstrated, you know, walked in front with a sign, that's a demonstration. If I go to somebody's house and I break their windows and then I try to set fire in or around the house, that's not a demonstration. That's an attack. That's attempted arson. It's breaking and entering. It's a crime. This is rioting. This is what's going on. Now, of course, the media doesn't call it that. They call it a demonstration. Nevertheless, as a result of this, which has been going on for, for days, maybe even a week, uh, Wheeler has told uh, his fellow residents that, quote, best for me and for everyone else's safety and peace, unquote, that he finds a new home. Uh, now, I have no idea where he's going to go, but if the people find out where he went, they're just going to follow him. 
But to me, this is the epitome of weakness. I mean, he's the mayor. He knows what's been going on all this time in his city. And instead of uh, doing something about it, why not shut down the demonstration? Why doesn't he do that? Uh, if he's the mayor of Portland and they're, they're threatening the building where he lives in this demonstration or whatever you want to call it, it's, it's a protest. It's an arson attack. Why not bring the police force in and clear the demonstrators out of the way? I mean, he can't even live in his home. At least Mayor Lightweight in Chicago, you know, wasn't going to let anybody demonstrate anywhere near where she lived. I mean, she's, she's got more chutzpah than, than Wheeler. I mean, Wheeler is, oh my God, he's just, he's just disgusting. I mean, he's, he's totally useless. I mean, yeah, he's, he's asked for these things to stop. Not because they're wrong, not because they're violating the law, but because, as he warned them, they're helping Donald Trump in the polls. And that seems to be the only thing that matters. It's, it's proof to me what Wheeler said about this, that these things are political. This isn't about real social justice or racial justice. This is about political power. That's what he said when he said, you know, he doesn't say don't stop. He doesn't say don't stop this because or stop this because it's wrong. It says you stop this because you're going to help Donald Trump get elected. That tells me what's going on is purely political. I mean, what if it wasn't an election year? What if Trump wasn't up for election? Does that mean the riots would just go on interminably because there'd be no Trump to help in the polls? I mean, is that what he's saying? It, that's the implication of what he's saying, that it's okay for them to be out there doing these things. And in my opinion, it's not. And I think a lot of other Americans feel the same way. And it is affecting the polls. It is going to help Donald Trump win, just as what happened in 1968 helped Richard Nixon win. Just as what happened in Baltimore in 2015, I believed at the time, and said so in social media, was going to help Whoever ran in 2016, whatever Republican ran, he would be helped by what had happened in 2015. Now, that turned out to be Donald Trump. And I do think, I'm not saying that's the main reason Trump won, but I think it's one of the contributing factors to that. And we'll see what's going on uh, this time around. You know, we keep seeing these polls that Trump's going to do a lot better with the African American vote than people expect. And that's, that's not a surprise either. If you go back to the 1968 election, Everybody talks about Richard Nixon and the Southern strategy, the reason being he won. And there's something to that, but it's grossly exaggerated. But the main thing is, if you look at the number, you know, uh, the Republicans in 1964 got 4% of the black vote. In 1968, after the riots, Richard Nixon got 12% of the African American vote. He tripled the percentage that the Republicans got. And if Donald Trump does something like that today, you know, he's going to win big, really big. And this is another story that I saw while I was gone. I thought I'd pull up. Uh, Nina Mann arrested at Green Bay protest has ties to Antifa. Matthew Banta is also charged with pointing a loaded gun at a police officer during a protest at Alpaca County. Uh, and basically, this guy, let me just read this. A Nina man had a flamethrower, smoke grenades, and fireworks during a demonstration in Green Bay Saturday night, according to police and protest. Remember, also they claimed he had a loaded gun up here. Uh, I don't know what, who comes to a protest with a baseball bat for anything other than criminal or illegal activity. Uh, the, the whole bunch of white people armed with sticks, baseball bats, and helmets were headed toward, uh, toward the police. So they arrested this guy. And, and this is, let me just read the final part here. The officer caught Bounta. Everybody else ran away and they got away, but I guess he was slow. Maybe because he was carrying all this stuff. I don't know how much flamethrower his way. The officer caught Bounta, who was carrying the flag, and says Bounta, quote, dropped into the fetal position and began crying. <laughs> this is, these are the people that the police are up against. Crybabies. You know, there were crybabies out Mayor outside of Mayor Wheeler's, Wheeler's condo, but he won't let the police take care of him. And I think if they just allowed the police to start breaking these things up, maybe they'd get a handle on it. Uh, if they wait, they're just, the longer they wait, 
the more it's going to help Donald Trump politically. And they know it. But I don't think they have the guts to stand up to these people. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a really interesting story. I can picture this hardcore Antifa guy, you know, laying on the ground crying because he's being arrested. God forbid somebody should actually, you know, bat him over the head with one of his bats or hit him with a flamethrower that he's carrying or a Molotov cocktail or something. I can imagine what he'd do. And then there was this. Paul Krugman. What a guy. And let me just read his tweet. I went for a belated NYC run this morning, comment. And I'm sorry to report that I saw very few black-clad anarchists. Also, the city is not yet in flame. Now, you know, I just drove all the way across the state of Florida, and I didn't see any anarchy, and I didn't see, well, actually, I did see some flames, but it was an agricultural burn. But nobody's claiming that the entire country is under attack by black-clad anarchists. And even in the cities where they are out and about. They're out and about at night. They're not out in the morning when he's doing his run. So, I mean, this is, is moronic for a New York Times reporter to say that because, you know, he ran in wherever he runs, I don't know, maybe Central Park, and he didn't see riots going on, that there's, they're not happening in the country. This is, what, some sort of myth? And here's his uh, second tweet in this stream. The political question of the day is whether Trump can win politically by hammering on a non-existent crisis of order in American cities. You think not, but I'm not 100% confident. Now, you know, it, we've seen Chris Cuomo, uh, we've seen other people, even in the left-wing media, we've seen Mayor Wheeler, who, who I just talked about, whom I just talked about in Portland, you know, saying that these events are helping Donald Trump. And here, despite that, you know, Krugman refuses to believe that they're happening. Uh, Non-existent crisis. No, there's no crisis. You know, these cities aren't under assault. These businesses aren't being burned down. I would like to see him walk through some of these neighborhoods and tell the people who lost their businesses, who have had their lives and homes threatened, uh, that this is a non-existent crisis. Uh, in American city. As Pew has documented, we went through a quarter century of rapidly falling crime, and all the way through, people declared that crime was rising. Uh, and, and it's true, you know, overall, crime has gone down, but there are always some aspects of crime pop up here or there, and it depends where you live. You know, crime can be going down nationally, it might be going up where you live. Crime was going down for a long time, shootings in New York City. But lately, they're going up. I mean, you can have two things happening at the same time, which obviously is a problem with Krugman. I mean, just because he doesn't see a riot where he's jogging on a morning, he assumes that nothing's happening in other places at night. I mean, this it's, it's is just a failure for a critical thought of Paul Krugman, which I guess is nothing new. Uh, one reason is that people live in bubbles. Well, I'd agree with him there. After 2016, there was endless reporting on how urban types don't understand the lives of guys in diners. But there's equal, if not greater, absence of comprehension going the other way. Uh, I, I guess there is. Probably people who live out in the countryside don't know what it's like in New York City other than what they see. But the thing is, if you live in New York City, you don't even see on TV what's going out in the countryside. So what do you really know? Uh, all these things are, you know, and who's living in a bubble? You know, the people who are, are Trump supporters out in areas I just drove through in Florida. Or, you know, people like Paul Krugman, who's, you know, reporting and sitting in a New York Times newsroom with a bunch of, uh, of other people who may be all different colors, all different religions, but all think exactly the same, which they call, in their view, diversity. You know, having different people of different ethnic backgrounds all believing absolutely the same thing. That's diversity. Not people thinking differently and holding different views. That's not diversity. That's racism. And this last one is from uh, uh, Nate Silver's 538. And Nate Silver is the political polling genius, as we all know, 
who was, I think he had, uh, uh, Trump had a 7% chance of winning in the last election. Uh, so much for his expertise. But this just caught my eye. Why Minnesota could be the next Midwestern state to go red. And I said, do I even need to read this? I mean, why might Minnesota be going red? What's been happening in Minnesota since George Floyd was killed? Uh, rioting, looting, arson, and of course, some peaceful protests, to be sure. But with all this going on in the state, the people are people really unable to comprehend that what they're seeing going down in places like Minneapolis might have a negative impact on Joe Biden's candidacy. I mean, have, don't these people remember 1968? You know, in 1968, I was, I was still in high school. I couldn't vote, but I considered myself you know, a good Democrat in our, our mock election in school in 1964, I had made a speech in favor of Lyndon Johnson. And I warned my schoolmates that if they voted for Barry Goldwater, they'd probably end up in Vietnam. Some of them did. And it's a, it's a speech I gave that I wish I hadn't given, to, you know, ever since. In 68, I was all for, you know, Hubert Humphrey. Uh, I wasn't all that excited about him, but it didn't matter because I couldn't vote anyway. But, you know, I didn't go along with the dump the hump and I didn't like uh, uh, some of the alternative Democratic candidates. I was really distraught at seeing what had happened at the Chicago convention, which I remember watching. So I remember seeing Dan Rather get roughed up on the floor of the convention. Uh, but then after seeing what was going on with all the riots, I, I had a feeling that, you know, Nixon, there was a good chance Richard Nixon was going to be elected president. And he was. And it really upset me because I really didn't like uh, Nixon. And when I, I did get to vote first time in 1972, I voted against him. I voted for George McGovern. So I was no Republican. You know, I was no uh, Nixon lover. I, I, I hated Nixon. You know, uh, say Dick Nixon before he dicks you was one of my favorite sayings at the time. Uh, but I had a gut feeling that Richard Nixon was going to be uh, elected in 1968. I just had this bad feeling because of the riots, because I knew people in my neighborhood. The riots were nowhere near us in Philadelphia, but I knew people whose opinions had changed because of the riot. People just were looking for law and order. And Richard Nixon was seen as the law and order candidate, not Hubert Humphrey, who had been nominated at you know the chaos of the Chicago convention. So I had a, a bad feeling about that. Likewise, I had a bad feeling in 1972 that, you know, McGovern was going to get totally creamed, which he did, uh, not because, you know, I was voting for Nixon, but because outside of my bubble, I was a college student by then, and getting away from my fellow college students and looking at people I knew from work or around my neighborhood, you know, they were all going to vote for Nixon. And I sort of get that same feeling today. You know, I, I worked for years as an academic and I lived in that bubble, but I've been teaching online from a different city in, a, in a, an area that's not filled with academics. And you get a really different vibe once you get out of that bubble. So you see things differently, you hear things differently. And, you know, I, from what I'm hearing and seeing, I'm starting to get the same kind of feelings I had in 68 and 72. The question to me isn't, will Donald Trump win? Will Donald Trump win like Nixon did in 1968 or like Richard Nixon did in 1972? And as I already said, Nixon got 12% of the African-American vote in 1972. I've seen different statistics. I mean, in 1968, 1972, some say he got actually 15%. I'll just put it lower than that. But he probably did as good or better in 1972. And if he gets anything like that, God forbid, if he gets 20%, like some of the polls are predicting, and it's not inconceivable to me uh, that, that that could happen, then it's going to be a landslide because the Democrats are going to get crushed, not only just at the presidential level, but they're going to lose down ballot too if this happens. And I think they know that, and that's really what they're worried about. And you can see them starting to uh, make the point that these riots, protests, 
peaceful, mostly peaceful protests have to end. I mean, you can't have people standing in front of burning buildings, you know, with a crayon going by saying it's a peaceful protest or mostly peaceful, as they say. I mean, it, it's becoming a joke. And I, I can't understand how the media can't under comprehend, get their head around the fact that nobody's going to buy this crap anymore. And I think they, they're, they're, they're all like lemmings, you know, heading toward the cliff to jump off. Or maybe I'm totally wrong, but I don't think I am. Anyway, I'm back home. I'm planning a couple of different videos and I'll try to get them up what I can. But in the interim, I just wanted to upload something and uh, react to some of the things that I've seen going on the last couple of days. Uh, and I do think, you know, there's been several videos I've posted lately arguing that Donald Trump is going to be reelected. And I'm more certain of that, you know, every day from what I see. Uh, in any event, uh, if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if there's things you'd like to see me talk about or some issue, uh, let me know in the comment section. And until the next time, if they're going to be resisting, we need to keep fighting.